uh, waiting here at the Buford County School District offices. It is uh, Tuesday evening, uh, July 11th, and waiting for the arrival of David Cook, who done a protest at the county school board meeting involving some chicken feed that he threw at the feet of the board members and should be some fireworks here tonight. So I'm uh, just uh, waiting in the parking lot before David arrives. What's up, brother? Hey there. David, is it okay to talk or no? I want to get in there when the meeting starts. Okay, bro. Yeah, man. Are there? Everybody have to sign in, or just if you're talking? I guess if you're talking. Oh, that's right. Okay. sitting around the kitchen table um, after we ate dinner where each one of our children would read books. And these were books they brought home from the library. And each week, a special uh, reading for my kids were allowed, and they would choose the books and the chapters from which they would read. It mattered not whether a first grader or a seventh grader did the reading, the entire family participated. After they read their chapters as family, we would discuss what they read, what they learned, which was enlightening for the entire family. I cannot fathom that today. Can you, can you imagine sitting around a table with your family after dinner and having one of your children select a book that's totally inappropriate to be reading? I can't, but yet, my family, my kids could have brought books home if this was the books they had. How about this idea, who, for those of you who support books in the schools, would you commit to setting aside a special time every week with your family to get your grandchildren, your children, let them read books that some consider to be um, pornographic, and then you sit around and say, let's, let's talk about this to a first grader, second grader, third grader. We did this with our children, not with pornography, but very open discussion, and discussion to which this day they appreciate, and they have modeled with their children. You know, I, I asked rhetorically, raise your hands if you would like to sit around and do this with your children or grandchildren. No hands. I would eagerly raise my hand, but trust me, I shudder at the very thought of doing that today. Our Lord, our God, told us in Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 9, and I quote, I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generations, those generations who hate me but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. Woe to those families and our community members who support such indoctrination to young children and the repercussions to the generations to come. 
This is not about banning books. This is about morality. Mr. Rupert, time is done. Please stop speaking. Thank you. Topic eight, safety and security concerns. Good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. I want to talk to you about the situation with Mr. Cook. In the rubric for the review committee, when grading on avoidance of perversive vulgarity, the reviewer is tasked with when considered as a whole, the novel does not appeal to sexual interest in a sexual way, shameful way. I constantly get accused of cherry picking excerpts from books and not considering them as a whole. So let's compare that to Mr. Cook's situation. He has been actively engaging the school board on different issues for about three years. In those three years, he has sometimes been critical of the board or schools, which is his prerogative, but he has always been respectful in the way that he has said things. Why is the school board just focusing on his actions at the last scheduled meeting? Why are you not considering his actions as a whole, like you're saying should be done with the books? Can you see the hypocrisy there? If you think his actions are strong enough to warrant banning him from speaking in person or whatever you decided to do, shouldn't one excerpt that is obscene be enough to take a book off the shelves for minors? And if you're going to sanction one person for their actions concerning the book issue, are you not going to sanction the action of others? For those board members who feared what Mr. Cook did, what about the continued harassment from some of the board members of Families Against Book Bans? Truly, some of their behavior scares me such as calling me a Nazi and nicknaming me Housefrau. Is this done to instigate someone who is unstable to come after me? But what about sharing my address on social media? The chair of Fab's husband did that, and she laughed about it. That is called doxing. Do you know what that is? Doxing is to search for or publish private or identifying information about a particular individual on the internet. Typically with malicious intent. Let me repeat that part. Typically with malicious intent. Was it to scare me? Was it to get some whack job to come to my home and destroy my property or cause harm to my, me or my family? I may never know, but that damage of doxing is done. Tossing eight bags of chicken feed on the stage in front of the board is minuscule compared to having your home address shared online. And those of you who keep voting to put the books back on the shelves are aligning yourselves with the people doing the harassment. I can assure you that what they have said is far worse than anything said by the people I'm associated with. Whether we agree or disagree on issues, we should never post things on social media that could potentially cause harm to another person. What happens if that whack job does harm to me and it, it was a result of seeing the defamatory things that are being posted online? Does the district have any liability because it was caused by a direct issue concerning them? Just some things for you to think about, to ponder, so that you don't look like hypocrites. Thank you. Let's invite Isabella Cook. Her topic is school experience. My name is Susanna Cook, and I'm a mother of two children that currently attend Beaver County Schools. I find, my, I find myself again in this spot, reminding you, reminding you that when you decided to run for school board and were fortunate to be elected by your constituents, you assumed a moral obligation to uphold the Constitution and defend, above all, the safety of the over 20,000 children in the district. Now putting your personal ideologies, personal agenda, and your personal safety ahead of these children is irresponsible and unacceptable. This is not the first time that you will hear this, and it will not be the last. We will continue telling you the same story until you do the right thing. Many options have already been given to you, and you continue to choose to ignore them. You continue to side with the wrong side and to cave to the loud masses that bully, bully and want to impose on us what they think is the norm. You are all so much into technology and laptop devices. Well. Why don't you just limit the access to these filthy books to the Zora reading app 
available in all the school computers. We're in the middle of the summer break, and this is a perfect time to clean house. Get the librarians to go through the books in the libraries and get rid of all books that have sexually explicit material. It is pretty simple. There are websites, just like our district library site, Destiny, that have books rated and same samples of content. Content, that garbage does not need to be in front of the eyes of innocent children. The constant push of this kind of content to, content to minors damages their minds. It affects their future and it makes them vulnerable to predators that lurk daily around them to abuse them. If you can, take a moment to watch the movie Sound of Freedom. You would be horrified. Now don't think for a minute that because you all sit there as the school board, you are in an almighty position and get to the side of the life of our children. They are ours, not yours. Bravo. Bravo. All, they are the children of God. Yes. And God's children are not for sale. Amen. And guess yeah. what? My children are very proud of their father, and I am too. Thanks for giving me a chance to speak. For the record, if you didn't see the video, it was a cornhole toss of chicken feet. Trust me, I've had enough practice. Did you catch on yet, though? Does anyone see how I just influenced policy in two weeks' time? This is how you should have moved last year when we pointed out the explicit books in schools. Why was your security policy influenced? Because you thought something impacted you personally when it really didn't. This is a sign of victimhood. Book review policy changes can happen just as fast. One application on, on the district devices will do it all, the Sora app. If a child can't access these books on the Sora app, it's likely because of the content. I know you're tired of me holding you accountable, but when I pointed out two weeks ago that you're too afraid to change policy and remove sexually explicit books from the schools, you wanted to find a way to try to shut me up. And you wanted an excuse to get the public to hate me, so you implemented a policy against bags. That's fine, it's your prerogative. And I fully support your, your, your policy. You made it very clear why that policy was implemented and you made it clear to the public who caused that policy to be changed. The reality is it's your fault you had to change this policy. I've given you sound constructive information and it goes unheard. I'm not gonna sit back and watch children in our school district be exploited. Keeping explicit materials does nothing. No one in this room can prove to me these explicit books improve reading proficiency at any level. I get it. You hate me so much that my wife's speech in Spanish from two weeks ago was intentionally garbled on the playback for at least five days after the meeting, and I don't know if it's been corrected. That's what you would call not being inclusive, because you're probably the first person that's spoken ever at school board meeting in Spanish. If you think for one second that I'll learn a lesson from this, you're right. Now I'm going to fight harder for my kids. What you fail to understand is that there's a Supreme Court opinion that obligates you, under duty of law, to remove, remove obscene materials from schools. You don't have a choice. That's right, you don't have a choice. And there's a, also a South Carolina State Attorney General opinion that supports that Supreme Court opinion of Island Trees versus Pico. You have the constitutional right to remove obscene material and you have a duty under the law to do it. Here I have a list of 1,500 publications removed from our jails. That's right, they remove books from jails. Sexually explicit books with the same language these books have in our schools. The images that I gave to Mr. Grissom came from my son's device. I'd like you to take a, take a look at them. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to take my wife and my children to Tractor Supply, and we're going to buy some baby chicks. And we're going to name them Christina, Angela, Dick, Carlton, William, Chloe, and Ingrid. Thank you.
just left the Beaufort County School meeting and David Cook uh, did get a chance to address the committee again today. Um, there were no fireworks as we had anticipated, uh, but David did get in some good points and made a, a zinger, another insult at the board very cleverly. Um, but it didn't involve throwing anything, like um, tossing the uh, chicken feed that he tossed two weeks ago. Uh, anyway, I'm heading back to uh, Bluffton, and uh, we'll check in later.